Newton Crouch Incorporated presents technical tips. Why doesn't my conveyor chain turn on? You've loaded your spreader with fertilizer, driven to the field, and you're ready to go. Now what? Your conveyor chain won't move? Well, here comes the F word, frustration. Take a deep breath. This is a common problem and usually an easy fix. Let's go through it step by step. This video deals with a hydraulic spreader using a controller. Our actions will depend on this starting information. Is this the first time you are spreading in this season? By that we mean your equipment has been sitting in storage for several months. Or your spreader was working fine and has suddenly quit. Our situation is the start of a new growing season. Your controller has been inactive for several hey, months. Density. The best time that you can spend is to verify all your settings. Your controller Greater is count. a field computer. Trash in, trash out. If your settings are not correct, you will Target not spread rate. the density. product at the desired rate. And of course, if the settings Everything are not correct, right. you cannot even get your Important equipment to spread at all. Folks. There are several brands of controllers available. You must go through the setup procedure for your brand and model. See your manufacturer's instructions. While all settings are important, these three will keep you from spreading. Speed, swath, and rate. Is your controller receiving speed from your GPS antenna? Make a brief drive and verify a number appears in that field. Do you have a swath entered in your console? It must not be zero. Do you have a rate entered into your console? It cannot be zero. Make sure the hydraulic ends are plugged into the tractor correctly and are secure. Your tractor must supply the correct amount of hydraulic fluid to power the motors and bed chain. This is usually 21 gallons per minute minimum. Consult your spreader manual to determine the correct GPMs required and your tractor's manual to determine its capabilities as specified by manufacturer. If your hydraulics for your conveyor quit running, if you're running your lever push forward to run the chain, what you'll want to do first, push it into float, turn it off, pull it in the opposite function, pull it in the opposite function, and then push it back to float, and then push it forward most of the time that will actually reset your tractor's hydraulics uh, you can do the same for the spinners in other words if you're pushing it forward to run the tractor and you don't get any flow you don't get any movement on the spinners you would turn it off pull it the opposite way turn it off again and turn it back in oftentimes that resets the tractor's hydraulics Visually inspect and check all hoses and cables. Have the connections jiggled loose from vibration? Check all connections at the spreader and inside at the controller. Did these steps fix your problem? Let's check your PWM valve. Well, what is a PWM valve? It is a valve that regulates the amount of hydraulic fluid that flows to the motors that turn your rear roller, thus rotating your conveyor. On Newton Crouch equipment, the PWM valve is on the driver's side of the unit. Test the connection from your tractor to the PWM valve for voltage. Is the valve getting power? To test the voltage, on the PWM valve, you would first need a, a test meter or a conventional test light. For a more accurate reading, you would need a test meter. Since your spreader has not been used in several months, the hydraulic fluid has drained to the lowest point in your lines there is a possibility that your PWM has seized and will need some coaxing to begin working again. The easiest way to force this valve open is to give it a 12 volt surge from a battery. For convenience, use your truck battery. Unplug your valve from your tractor console. 
The wire to the tractor will be green and yellow with a two-pin connector. Make sure your hydraulics are engaged to the spreader. Drive your truck beside your spreader, pop the hood, and run two wires from the battery to the pigtail on the PWM valve. One wire is ground, the other wire is hot. It does not matter which battery poles are used on the wiring. The sudden burst of power will open the valve and the bed chain will begin to move at top speed. If the chain does not engage, the coil must be checked. Once you have confirmed that you have voltage to your coil on your PWM, you would then plug it back up. To check the coil, you would unscrew the nut on the top of the coil. Then remove the coil. Don't lose the O-ring. If your coil is working properly, once you energize it, it should be magnetized. It will stick. That will open and close your valve. If your coil does not have power to it, it is not energized, which means it is not magnetized. The last step in PWM valve maintenance is turning the stem screw. If you do this, you will need to undo your turning, that is, return the screw to its original position. After you've tested your coil and you know you have voltage, you can unloosen the acorn nut. There is a flat screwdriver slot in the top of the valve. You can turn in or out to manually override your valve. If your chain will not work, you will turn in to open your valve. If it will not shut off, screw the valve out. When your conveyor chain creeps or continues to move after you have turned off the chain control but your hydraulics are still on, you can use the stem adjustment to correct this. Okay, it's time to check and see if we have fixed our problem. The answer is probably yes. If the answer is still no, there are some other items to check, but these are very unusual. You have performed all the simple fixes. Now it's time to return to your shop. The next steps will examine other possibilities, but will require you to disassemble some components with tools. Detailed information on other possible problems is provided in Conveyor Chain Quit Working. Our goal is to get you back in the field spreading as quickly as possible. Proudly made in America, a family-owned business since 1940, Newton Crouch, Inc.